Assalamu alaikum. We have just launched our Fight with Light fundraising campaign for Seekers Hub Global, where our goal is to raise $60,000 in monthly donations by the end of the year. And all of this money will go towards fighting ignorance and fighting hatred and fighting extremism by spreading the light of knowledge and the light of guidance and the light of the way of our Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We hope that you'll join us in this fight. And you can do so by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org slash donate. You're listening to The Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas of the Lotri Foundation. In this podcast, Sheikh Zahir explains the aphorisms from Ibn Atta al-Laz Fim's Book of Wisdoms, Al-Hikam al Ata'iyya, a classical manual of spiritual development. Visit seekershub.org for online courses, our reliable answer service, and engaging media. <laughs> So we're in the, um, we started this book, the Hikam, the book of aphorism or wisdoms of Ibn Ta'illah, uh, one of the great, great scholars of the past that was born in Alexandria. This is Iskandar in the north um, of Egypt. <clears throat> and so it's just, it's statements, you know, books. Sometimes when they author, the authors, they write, like we covered Imam Ghazali's book, uh, uh, Imam uh, Nawi's Riyadh Salihin's Hadith base, or uh, the Risala of Imam Muhasabi, in which he writes and dictates this, uh, the Hikr of Ibn Ta'illah, this book on our statements made to direct the seeker directing the seeker of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while reflecting in one's own uh, self, the reflection into one's uh, own self. So we cover the first one, this one, he says, rahmatullahi iradatuka wa tajreed ma'a iqamat allahi iyaka fil asbab min shahwat al وَهِرَادَتُكَ الْأَسْبَابِ مَعَ إِقَامَةَ اللَّهِ إِيَّاكَ فِي تَجْرِيدٍ إِنْ إِطَاطًا أَنِ الْأَهِمَّ الْأَعْلِيَ أَهِمَّةَ الْأَعْلِيَ So he says that you're wanting to leave uh, to leave worldly uh, means while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed you in uh, while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed uh, in in keeping you in them, uh, so you're wanting to leave. Uh, uh, you're wanting to leave the uh, uh, the uh, worldly means, while Allah is keeping you in those worldly means, is from a hidden uh, shahwa, is from a hidden uh, desire. It's from a desire that is uh, hidden from one. And then he says, and you're wanting, uh, asbab, uh, you're wanting to engage in the means of this world while Allah has placed you uh, in himself or while Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed you away from it is uh, a fall from high uh, aspiration is a, a fall or is a letdown from high uh, aspiration. So the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, this is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, that you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hand or his qadr, you see the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything, his decree is in everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wherever he places you, is where you are. So, you know, our actions are dictated uh, with our niya, our intention. Our actions are dictated and we have strength and we have ability and skill. All that is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of it is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you earn or you don't earn is given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too. So, Everything is guided and everything is in control by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ours is to set forth the intention. We have the intention to study. 
And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to study. We have the intention to, uh, to take knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed it. If Allah subhanahu did not want it to allow us to it, we would sit and we would, and we would study books, but we won't gain anything. We would not gain anything. Or we would work the entire week, and at the end of the week we won't earn anything. There wouldn't be any check that came to us. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted and, and had uh, decreed such. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he places, uh, he places people in things that they, uh, whether they themselves see themselves guided towards or whether they think they've placed themselves in it. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who places the believers and everyone for that matter in the things that they, that they are. So worldly means here are uh, our actions or deeds uh, which tries, uh, by which one tries to obtain uh, one's material needs. That's worldly means. Things that you know, a person will try their best uh, in, in doing or in order to obtain what they need in this world. That's worldly means. Uh, it entails, uh, and leaving worthy means, entail not busying oneself from these acts themselves. So when you leave, you know, the worldly means, asbab, you're leaving so that you're not busy uh, from it. So even a bad, he says, if the truth, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established someone in earning a living, and this person desires to leave this, his desire is from a non obvious lust. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established someone in, in asbab, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established someone to work. And through their working, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enables them to not only fulfill the needs that they have, but to fulfill the needs that uh, those under their care have. Because we have, you know, there are uh, there's responsibilities that we have or there's rights that are upon us. Other people may have rights upon us like our children, our spouse, our wives. They have, or wife, <laughs> they have, we have a responsibility to take care of them. And so if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places one uh, in establishing and gaining and earning a living, and the person wants to leave that. The person wants to leave that. Uh, this is from a lust. This is from a lust. And it is among the lust because it is not in concurrence with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided or willed for that person. Why is it from Hawa? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not established the person in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not uh, uh, he's not willed that they leave this. It is not obvious because this person does not intend a worldly gain. Rather, he only intended to come closer to Allah subhanahu by being in a situation that is more elevated in, in his opinion. Hmm? This is Ibn Abad, Rando, one of the great scholars who did commentary on this. So it's, it's hidden because the person doesn't see it. What's the person's intention? Well, you know what? I'm not. I'm tired of working. I'm tired of working. I'm tired of being in the rat race. I'm tired of, of you know, these people. All I want to do is just sit in the masjid. All I want to do is to get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So I'll spend more time with that. I'll spend more time in salah. Why do I need to go, you know, work? I'll, I'll instead of working full time, I'll work part time. And I'll dedicate that other second half to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That person, if anyone comes and says that, you'll think that person is, is, is doing something good. That they're changing their direction. They're changing their direction or their course. And they're coming to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, what does he say? Uh, so he intends it to come closer to Allah. Mm. Because he believes uh, that in, in, by being a Sudha is more elevated. In his own opinion, he thinks that this is better, in his own opinion. 
And then he says, however, he has not kept to proper etiquette by opposing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will in keeping him in his current state and also by trying to seek a high position which he is not fit for at the present time. And so he said the telltale sign of Allah's keeping a person in a worldly means is that his means of income is steady, flowing, and the fruit and profit of his work is at hand. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing tawfiq to the person. The person is working, the person is happy, the person is earning a living, the person is earning enough not only to take care of his own family or uh, is working enough to uh, to fulfill the hukuk, to fill the rights of others, but the person is also earning enough so that he may uh, be a means of helping others. Whether that means directly helping others, like giving people who are less fortunate, uh, you know, money, helping them with food or whatnot, or whether that means that one is helping by building masajids or building schools or helping in the process of that. That person, he does what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed him in means and he's giving him success in that means. The person is being, is given success by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in those means and there's fruit and there's profit. You know, he sees the thamar, he sees the, uh, the person sees the, the fruits of his labor, right? He sees the fruits of his labor. Mm. So he's not, He's not fighting upstream. He's not swimming upstream in, in Asbab, right? He's not coming home every day, you know, saying, oh, this is the worst job. You know, he's miserable. He's complete, can't even pray properly. His mind is completely distracted from, uh, from the Asbab, from the means, the work that he's doing uh, and the things that he has to deal with. Now, doesn't mean that, that you're not going to have issues in, in worldly things. You're going to have issues. It's part of life and it's part of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings to us mm, as a way of self-correcting ourselves. And it could be the difficulties that we have when Allah has placed us in worldly means is from ourselves. Could be, even though it may come through others like our employer, our bosses, our managers or whatnot but it could be coming from our own lack of etiquette or our own lack of, of refinement in our character or our own lack of refinement in, 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 in behaving in a way uh, or acting in a way that causes harmony. So it could be that. Hmm. But the person is not fighting against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dictated uh, to one. So he sees this. So he says, while earning a living, he also finds security for his religion and does not crave what others have. Mm, this is important. So Allah places this person in, in, in the world of means, but he's not craving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving him, he finds security in the religion. He can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not having difficulty in worship, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him the ability to not crave and not desire what other people have. Mm. But he's in the world of means. He could buy what other people have. But Allah has removed him from it and removed the desire from him. And then he says, he also has good intentions for joining blood ties, helping poor people, and has another useful purpose connected with wealth. So this is the person Allah has brought Asbab has brought him in the world of means and is wanting to remove himself from it is from a, a hidden uh, desire it's from a hidden desire because he thinks that uh, that leaving it and dedicating himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is better for him that's what he believes that's what he believes but he doesn't see that it's Allah who has placed him where he is Allah subhanahu wa places the servants where they are, they are. And then he says, as for the person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established in abstinence from worldly means, if he desires to leave his life of not earning a living, it shows a decline in his spiritual ambition and his bad etiquette. This desire to engage in worldly means 
is also in accordance with his obvious lust. Abstinence from worldly means is a high station in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has established um, special servants from amongst uh, those who we declare, who declare the oneness of Allah and know Him. So why does He want to descend from this high station that Allah has established Him to the ranks of the lower class? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has established that person so that he does not have to worry about a living. He doesn't have to worry about earning a living. He doesn't have to worry about that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed him with himself in the Iqamatullah. But the person wants to leave the khaliq and he wants to go back to the khalq. This is the person. He wants to leave the creator and he wants to go back to the khalq. He wants to go back to the creation. And, this, and so why does he want uh, to do this, to leave and to descend from where Allah has placed him to uh, a lower state uh, where he's with the khalq? The sign of it is, that, is uh, the telltale sign of Allah's keeping him in abstinence from worldly means is his persistence in it and is yielding its fruits and healing the fruit. So the person sees, he has, you know, the person is, is able to dedicate more of his time uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while still earning, while still having the means of, uh, of, of uh, while still having the means of, uh, of taking care of the people who are around him and taking care of himself. Among isolations, fruits are a good free time purity of heart and being free from mixing with people. Mm. This is from the fruits, he says, of, uh, of isolation, of being uh, in, with Allah and establishing, when Allah subhanahu wa establishes uh, someone with himself, mm. away from the, uh, away from uh, asbab, from worldly means and being, uh, you know, within the, the means uh, themselves. This is what he has. He has good free time. He has a purity of heart, and he's and he's free from the mixing with a lot of people. Spiritual ambition is a state of the heart. It is strength of willpower, and what presses one to obtain certain goals. It is high when attached to high things, and low when is attached to low things. Uh, this is himma, and himma is ambition. Mm-hmm spiritual ambition that they talk about. And it is a state of the heart, you know, that someone wants, you know, that one uh, has uh, the strength to, uh, and conviction to continue in doing things, even if it becomes hard on one. Like what? Like any form of ibadah or anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed one in, that one has the strength to continue uh, and that one has the strength to, uh, to, to obtain goals uh, that are clear cut. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places that and you see it and you work towards it and you keep up, even though it may be hard, but you have the strength to do it, uh, then this is high himma and wanting a decrease of it or wanting to fall back into a weakened position is low himma. Why would someone want, you know, if someone has tasted, uh, if someone has tasted a, uh, a fruit and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places that fruit in front of them, why would one want to leave it and go to something that is, that is rotten? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined you to be a person who you know, is uh, you know is is a person who uh, uh, is able to, for instance, come to the masjid um, every day. Why would one want the desire, you know, to? Uh, uh, why would one want the desire to move away, far further away from a place where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, especially if you see the fruits in one's life? 
if one sees the fruits in one life, why would one want desire uh, to move away uh, because one wants to live next or live uh, uh, with people who are more affluent, for instance? Why would one want that? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought one fruits uh, that bears fruits of it, this is a fall from having, uh, it's a fall from, from high spiritual ambition. It's a fall from having high al-himmat al And then one falls into a lower uh, ambition. The believer is, the, is a believer who, uh, no matter where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, places him, no matter where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places him, that he is contented by it. He has a contentment by it. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places one in the position. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can see success. There are people who are granted success. And, you know, not everyone, not everyone can be, you know, uh, without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes the will of means from them. Not everyone can be like that. If everyone was to be in that position, places like this would not be built. Places like this would not be built. Because places like these centers and masajids and schools are built on what? Are built on people who earn a living. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them success in earning a living so that they can give donations and zakat, or donations to build places uh, such as these. It's success of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then there are others. Uh, there's others who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has removed the asbab, removed worldly means from them so that, they can, uh, so that they can then establish places like this. They can establish places like this. And, and they can uh, be the ones who try to rectify uh, things that other people face. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides people and gives people and places people where he wants them to be placed. And you're fighting the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by wanting to be removed from it. You're fighting the will. And it could be that it becomes disastrous in the end, one way or the other. It could be that it becomes disastrous because you have just fought against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places when you see the fruits are in it, once you see fruits are in it, then remain to where you are. Remain uh, to where uh, you are. Because it could be a disaster. It could be a disaster waiting to happen. Uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send signals to the believers to where uh, they should be and what they should be doing. And you just have to be aware of the signals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send, sends to you. Unfortunately, today we live in a world where, you know, there's, we place so much veils between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we don't even see His direction and His directing us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directs the believers to everything that they should be doing. He directs the believers to everything that they should be doing. But as our own, uh, our own, the veils that we put up between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that keeps us from seeing those signals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us, forgive us. Have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our children, keep on the straight path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our, give those who are sick. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal them and cure them. Those who have passed away. <coughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them his mercy, his makura, his shade on that day when there is no shade except his. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect and provide assistance to all the believing men and believing women. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us success. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate us, increase us in knowledge and practice of the deen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit us through knowledge that he has taught us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to see uh, the, the, his, guiding, uh, his guidance in all of our actions. In all of our words, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and protect our children and our families, make our homes from amongst the homes of the believers and make our last words our best words. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, shadu wa na ilayla anta astaghfiruka 
wa atubu ilaik wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Thank you for listening to the Hikam with Sheikh Zahir Bekas. Help Seekers Hub spread the light of guidance to millions around the world by supporting us through monthly donations by going to seekershub.org slash donate. Your donations are tax deductible in the U.S. and Canada.